Hi everyone. I might be a, a minute or two late. My phone was doing something weird, so I hope we're live. I hope. Um, weird phones, you can't trust technology. All right, you guys, we are, um, it's the last day of September. So I'm going to go over things going on that are only for today and then things that start tomorrow. My host code is actually new. So this is my October host code. So if you want to order anything, you're welcome to use this host code and you'll get the October special that I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, sorry. Okay, hope you guys are still there. <laughs> I need to remember to turn off my notifications. All right, um, so I have a new host code. The September host code will end about 8 o'clock tonight. So um, just if you have any orders that you want to get in with a September host code, just make sure you do that um, by 8 o'clock mountain time. I will be closing that out tonight. Um, otherwise, October is going to be a huge month, and we'll get into that in a second. But first, um, let's talk about Paper Pumpkin. Christmas Paper Pumpkin is coming in October. If you want this kit, you only have like 10 days to subscribe. You need to be subscribed by October 10th. And that is coming up around the corner very quickly. So it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be eight Christmas cards to each of four designs. So make sure that you subscribe to get Paper Pumpkin. Um, this is the final day of the Get and Go promotion. This is the fantastic starter kit deal we have right now. When you purchase a starter kit, you get to choose a $125 in product for only $99. And then to make it even better, Stampin' Up! is going to add on some extra stamp sets and some card kits. So they're going to add on this one for free. This is the So Much Love stamp set. And they're also going to add on the Queens and Lace stamp set and a package of rhinestones and 16 card kits. And so that is today only though. That ends today. So if you want to do this, head to my um, join page and get the starter kit today. Um, it is always a great time to purchase a starter kit. So even if you purchase a starter kit tomorrow, it's still going to be a great deal. It's still um, $125 worth of product for only $99. So it's always a great, great deal. Starting tomorrow though, we have a designer series paper sale. I love our DSP and this sale I'm so excited about. So 15% off select designer series papers. There are a bunch of them too. Look how many there are. So this is a great time to stock up. There's some Christmas patterns. If you have your Christmas cards all planned out or designed, this is a great time to stock up on those. So look at all of this. And um, this will all be on my blog tomorrow. I'll have a whole post with pictures and everything on my blog tomorrow so you can check out the designer series paper, paper sale more in depth tomorrow. This starts tomorrow. You're not going to get that 15% off until October 1st. So tomorrow this starts. And starting tomorrow is Blendtober. Now this is my own thing. I am doing Blendtober. This is our Stampin' Blend. You know I love coloring with them. We're going to use them today actually. And in October I'm going to give you a free set of Stampin' Blends for every $50 you purchase. So, and there's no limits. If you purchase $100 you're going to earn two sets of Stampin' Blends. Um, once you place your order in my online store and you must use the host code just email me with the colors you want the blends will all ship out in November and I'm going to send them all to you as free gifts so that is all that's going on you guys so much happening so make sure you're finishing up with anything you need to finish today for September 30th and then tomorrow we are starting a new month new specials new amazing sales Okay, let's get to the card we're going to make today. This is the card we're making. It is so pretty. I just love this card. I I love the simplicity of it. I I just love it. This is an easy one to mass produce. So if you need to make a bunch of holiday cards, this is an easy and fun one to do. So let's go over the supplies real quick. So I have a piece of soft sea foam. This is our card base. This is five and a half by eight and a half and it's been scored at four and a quarter. I have a couple scraps of pear pizzazz and mossy meadow. We're going to die cut our wreath from these. So just scraps, scraps big enough for the wreath die. It's a pretty big die. So just scraps big enough. I have die cut this one. This is our stitch nested label die. I've die cut this out of white and this is 
the second largest. So in the Stitch Nested Label Dies, this one is the second largest size. You absolutely could use the largest one if you wanted. Um, I think the size just works perfectly. It's about the width of that wreath. So I think the size was perfect. All right. So, and then I just have a piece of Poppy Parade, which is four and a quarter by one. So the supplies you need are really, I mean, very minimal paper supplies, but it's going to end up being beautiful. So let's start, let's start with our stamping and then we'll do our die cutting. So let me move these out of the way. And I'm going to bring in my Stamparatus, I'm gonna move these. Oh my goodness, I can't pick anything up. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm gonna use my bone folder and just give this a nice crease because you want this to lay nice and flat. And I'm going to bring in my Stamparatus. If you don't have a Stamparatus, this is a great item to get. It is a fantastic, fantastic stamp positioner. There's so many things you can do with it. Now, because we are stamping the entire front of our card, you can't really put the magnet anywhere because that will interfere with the stamping. So what I have done, I have a piece of our Stamparatus grid paper in here, and I have a little bit of washi tape in here that I am just going to use to hold the inside corners of my card down. So this will keep it flat in position. If we have to restamp it, it'll be perfectly in position. And we won't have to use the magnet. Okay, I'm gonna use soft sea foam. We're gonna use soft sea foam on our card base. So soft sea foam ink, soft sea foam cardstock. And the background that we're using is the birch background. This is just a really fun one. I think it goes really well with the wreath. And we're just going to ink that up. So let me scoot this over a little bit so you can see everything. I'm just going to ink up my background. Now, when I'm using a background stamp, I really love to use a Stamparatus because these stamps are so big. It's hard to get nice, even coverage. So, all right, I'm gonna close that up and then we're just going to stamp it. And you know what? I need to move that over because I'm seeing that it's not lining up. So let me move it over. Is it, where do I want it? <laughs> where is it just? Ah. Okay, I want to line it up with this corner. I should have marked it. I considered marking it on my grid paper with a pen and then I was like, no, I'll remember. Yeah. Story of my life, right? All right. I think that's going to line up better. Yep, there we go. So we're going to close our Stamparatus and we're just going to give it a good press. The Stamparatus is perfect for lining up intricate images. It's great for two-step stamping. It's great for background stamping. There's so many different techniques you can do with the Stamparatus. So, all right, perfect. I'm just gonna pull that off the washi tape. You can see that real subtle, beautiful background. I'm just gonna set this aside. And I will clean that later. So we have our card base, that's ready to go. So we're gonna set that aside. Now the only other piece of stamping that we have to do is our greeting and we're actually going to heat emboss our greeting. So I'm gonna pull out my Poppy Parade and the greeting that I'm using is actually from Mary Moose. We're using this, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. This was a stamp and we, it's in the bundle. You can get a, the Moose Punch and the stamp bundled, save 10%. We had this last year and it sold out so fast. So I'm so glad they brought it back because I know there were so many people that just never had a chance to get it because it sold out so fast. Okay, using Versamark, Poppy Parade, and I'm gonna stamp it off to the left, as straight as I possibly can on camera. Oop, there we go. So Versamark ink, you're not gonna see it real good, but we're gonna sprinkle it with our white embossing powder. And then we're gonna use our heat tool to heat it up. So, so pretty, just make sure you get all those little Extra white pieces off. So white, and make sure you close your embossing powder or you're gonna end up with an embossing powder volcano. Ask me how I know. All right, we're gonna use our heat tool. I'm gonna heat it up off to the side for just a minute. I like bringing my um, heat tool to my project once it's nice and hot. It's gonna prevent a lot of the warping and it's gonna melt your embossing powder much quicker. All right, it only takes about 15, 20 seconds to heat up. And you can see how quickly it's heating. And once your embossing powder is all melted, you're done. So you can set that aside. So pretty. Now just let it cool and we're gonna keep moving along. We're gonna cut out our wreath pieces here. So let me move my ink out of the way. I'm gonna pull in my two 
green pieces, Mossy Meadow and Pear Possess. The wreath is from the wreath dies. This is also in a bundle with the wreath builder stamp set. We are only using the dies today, but the stamp set is fantastic and definitely worth getting. All right, I'm gonna pull in my stamping cut and emboss machine, and we are gonna cut these. We're gonna have to do two passes, but that's okay. So just lay it on your cardstock. We're gonna run it through. If you need a new die cutting machine, this one is fantastic. I did a lot of die cutting and embossing this morning, and I just love it. I love this machine. I love it. Okay, that's our mossy meadow piece. We're going to do our green piece. I know you probably can't see them off camera on the other side. We're just gonna crank it through this way. So this is a pretty detailed die and I'm only going through once. So it is a pretty great machine if you need one. All right, I'm going to move my plates out of the way. The machine folds up for storage. Fantastic. And I'll we'll set that aside. Okay, so pop out this centerpiece. This is great. It's a little scrap. You can punch some other leaves or something out of there if you want. We have our two leaves here. And so really all that we have to do now is assemble. So let's get our card all set. I'm going to use my stamp and seal. This card has no dimensionals, which is very unlike me. I don't think I can even recall the last time I made a card without dimensionals. So we're going to stick our our label in the middle. You absolutely could add dimensionals. You could always pop up the wreath or pop up the greeting if you wanted, but um, because we're kind of tucking it under one side, it's a little more challenging to add dimensionals. All right, now for our leaf die cut, you could use glue dots. I'm going to use my Tombow. That was a lot of glue. I'm going to use my Tombow and just kind of stick down some, use some glue to stick it down in some areas. Now I'm going to I'm going to make sure this little blob of glue goes on this side where it's going to get covered up because if it smears out. I want it to make sure that it's covered. Oh, and you know what? We need to put this down. Hello. Before we stick our wreath down, let's get some glue on this. Let's see. So we're not going to stick it down on both sides. We're just going to stick it under. We're going to stick it through the wreath. And before we stick it to that side, we're going to add our other wreath. So same thing, we're just gonna add a little bit of glue. Now you could always use the adhesive sheets would also be great for this. You could use um, our fine tip glue pen or again, glue dots would also be great. Okay, now we're just going to lift this piece up, bring this over and just lay everything down nice and flat. Just like that. I'm just gonna grab, while we finish up everything else, I'm just gonna grab a block, stick it on there. Let all that glue dry while we get along with our next part. So I have a piece of our white crinkle seam binding and I need some grid paper. Let me grab, let me grab the grid paper from my Stamparatus because I didn't get any out. So, magnet's holding it down. All right. I am going to, this is a very well-loved piece of grid paper. We're going to color this. I don't want it to be white. I want it to be soft sea foam. So I have my soft sea foam blends. Let me move this out a little bit further. I have my soft sea foam blends, the light and the dark. I'm going to start with my dark one and I'm going to use my brush tip. And I'm just going to, let's see, this is going to be hard to see on that. I'm just going to color that half. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to color this half. I don't, I'm not sure how much this is going to show up on the camera. This is a very light color. But we're just really giving this some depth. And I'm going to go back in with my light. And I'm going to go over all of those spots again. So let me turn this around. And the white seam binding, the beauty of this is that you can just make it any color you want. And it's nice and sheer, so you don't have to color both sides. You can color one side. The alcohol markers do a great job of of soaking through. Okay, now I'm gonna go back in with my dark. And this time, I just want my dark kind of along the bottom. So I'm gonna be very careful to just kind of do it along the bottom. I just want kind of an ombre look to this ribbon. So just along the bottom. And that should do it. All right, now while we're coloring with our Stampin' Blends, 
I wanted to add some little red berries to our card. So I'm gonna take my Poppy Parade and I'm actually gonna color some pearls. We sell red rhinestones, but I thought the pearls were a better shape and just a better size. So I'm using some of my small ones up here. I'm just gonna color five of them. So I'm using my brush tip again. Just make sure you go around the edges so that you get the edges colored too, along with the top. And we're going to set that aside to dry for just a second. Okay, let's bring in our card again. That Tombow really only needs a minute to set up. It's already looking so cute. Doesn't that look great? You can do this for any occasion. You can even make like a Halloween wreath. Maybe do some black and gorgeous grape or maybe gorgeous grape and pumpkin pie. That would be really pretty. You could add some like spiders on the wreath. That would be really pretty too. All right, we're gonna tie a bow. Let's see, oh man, tying a bow on camera. So, and our ribbon is already dry. It really does not take that alcohol ink long to dry. So we want like a nice little floofy bow. Looks good. And I'm going to use some glue dots. These are my paper pumpkin glue dots. Um, you can also use them off the roll. And this is just gonna go right down here. Then I'm gonna grab my scissors and just trim up those ends just a little bit. We don't need such long ends. Just a little bit. There we go. And our final touch is our pearls. These are nice and dry by now. So I'm gonna take my take your pick tool and just pick them up. And I'm just gonna scatter them around my card. Just around the wreath. I'm gonna put one down here and one more right above the bow right there. So pretty and such a simple card. This one is easy to mass produce. This is good to get the kids involved too. They can do all of your die cutting. Such a cute card though. Now I wanted to show you two more cards that I made using the same layout. I just, I loved this layout so much. So I wanted to make a couple more cards and just show you the versatility of this layout. So I have, I have a card, another card made with the Mary Moose stem set. So I have that same stitch label die. I have that same border strip that goes across, but instead of the wreath this time, I just added that moose and I punched him out. I cut out his his little scarf, so cute. I just love it. Enjoy the stillness of the season. I colored for the little enamel dots here. These are the playing with patterns dots, and I just colored those as well. And you can see the same birch background stamp on there too. So really fun way just to mix it up a little bit. And then I have one more card. It's not a Christmas card. You can see just how versatile this stamp set is. So that same label die and there are no well there are stamps there's some leaf stamps back here but the focal point this time is just with our playful alphabet dies and those were die cut on our foam foam adhesive sheets and i just added some flowers around there you guys look what i did though oh yes i am so upset so um i can fix it but i'm just so frustrated that i made this card backwards so we'll see so it's supposed to go like this a normal card would go like that but you know I I made it backwards who's done that who's been there but I love these cards they're just a fun way to show different layouts just how easy it is to switch it up just change out some colors and some materials and you can have three different completely different cards all right th this is the card we made today remember to shop this is October's host code you can start shopping on it now if you want and um, I will have details about all the specials going up on October first thing tomorrow morning on my blog and this will be on my blog tomorrow as well. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you're on YouTube, please like my channel and subscribe. And if you are watching on Facebook, please share this, this video with your friends. I would love to reach out to them as well. All right, guys, have a great day. I'll see you guys later. Bye.